I'm Cody, and on this episode of Problem Solved, we're diving into the iPad. I'm gonna share some tips to make you work smarter and also how to keep kids safe and on task when they're using one iPads are kind of like a mix between your phone and your computer. It has apps and widgets, but it also has a dock. Here are a few fun features you might not know that your iPad has. You can customize your iPad's dock just by dragging an app or an app folder down to it. If you like to work between different windows or apps, you might be familiar with the split screen option on your computer. Well, you can also do that on the iPad. Open the app you want to start with and then tap these three dots at the top of the screen and select split view. Then select your other app. Use this little slider in the middle if you want to adjust how much screen space each app is getting. But it doesn't stop there. You can also add a third floating window to this setup. I find the easiest way to do this is to have that app on your dock. Then just gently swipe up to get the dock while you're in split screen view, drag the app and it'll open. If you don't want it to float the entire time you're working in the split screen view, just slide it over to the side. Then you can access it easily and quickly if and when you need it. When you're ready to close any of these windows, just tap those three dots again and hit close. If you also like to take a lot of random screenshots of recipes and things on your iPad, this one is for you. There's an easier way to do it than hitting these two buttons at the same time. Just swipe diagonally from the bottom left corner. Doing the same thing from the bottom right corner brings up a quick note. This feature can be customized or disabled in the settings under multitasking and gestures. I came, I saw, iPad. Incorporating those simple yet effective tricks into your workflow can be a game changer. And my next tip is kind of in the same vein. And this time we're tackling the digital keyboard. Let's be real, typing on an iPad can be kind of awkward. It's a classic case of big device, small hands. Do I use my thumbs? Do I use my fingers, just one hand? I, I don't know. I come bearing tidings of good news. It comes in the form of a floating keyboard. Now there's two ways that you can get this. You can either press and hold this button and select floating or just pinch the keyboard. You can float the keyboard anywhere on the screen. Plus, if you like to do the swipe to texting, you can do that on here too. If you wanna go back to the regular keyboard, just pinch out to restore it to full size. Using the floating keyboard does eliminate some of the features that you get on the full size keyboard, like the key flicks that let you select numbers or special characters just by pulling down. Some iPads might offer a split keyboard option, which will put half of the keyboard on the bottom right and the other half on the bottom left. If your keyboard isn't undocking or you're having trouble using the key flicks, check the keyboard settings on your device. But wait, there's more. Copy and paste. We know her, we love her, right? There's some easier ways to do it and all it requires are three fingers. To copy text, just pinch closed with three fingers. If you wanna cut the text, pinch closed twice. And when you're ready to paste, just pinch open. But let's be real, sometimes it's hard to get the gestures just right. Another way to do it is by using these buttons. Cut, copy, paste. Easy as one, two, three. The compact size of an iPad makes it great to take on the go, but it's not always connected to the internet. My next tip will help you catch up on content anywhere, anytime. If you also like taking your iPad on the go with you, but you don't always have Wi-Fi, this is for you. Did you know that you can save web pages to read later? As in, when you don't have any Wi-Fi? All you have to do is add it to your reading list. To do that, just hit share and then tap add to reading list. To find your reading list, just tap the bookmark button and look for the eyeglasses. You can also create a reading list widget that lives right on your home screen. To do this, just hold down on the screen until all of the apps start to wiggle. Then press the plus sign in the corner, look for Safari, then choose the size that works best for you. Once you've consumed your content, you can swipe right to mark it as read or swipe left to delete it from your list. If you spend a lot of time working on your device while you're on the go, I recommend also downloading music, audiobooks, and content to stream while you're offline. Hmm, if only there was a video telling me how I could do that. Here's how to watch your favorite stuff without internet. Just look for a button that looks similar to this. It'll vary depending on the app that you're in. Make sure your content fully downloads before you go fully offline. I've learned that lesson the hard way and it was a very long flight. The reality of being a kid in today's world is there's technology everywhere. My next tip will help you keep kids safe and on task when they're using these devices. Hey parents, how many times have you pulled up a video or a game for your kids on your smartphone or tablet only for them to navigate out of it and end up somewhere you didn't really want them to be? That's a problem I can help you solve. I can't close him. 
That's called guided access. And what it does is essentially locks your device in one app. And to get out, you need a password. To set up guided access on your device, look for it in the accessibility settings. Then once you're ready to activate it for a specific app, just triple tap the button. The feature also lets you really customize the controls. You can disable specific parts of the screen just by setting a parameter. And then tucked under here under this options button are even more controls, like disabling the top button or the volume buttons, having the device ignore anything that touches the screen, or setting a time limit. Once you have all of those parameters set up, just click start. To end a guided access session, just hit the button again three times, put in your password, and tap end. Though some devices will allow you to do face ID or touch ID instead of a numerical password. Another place to set up some good safety parameters is in the screen time settings. In here, you can create time limits for apps, help prevent your child from sending or receiving inappropriate content, and so much more. Whether your kids use your device or they have one of their own, take a moment to check out all of these settings. And if all else fails, just lock them in an app and throw away the password.